Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Brother Stu here, Back to Bible Videos. Thank you, God, for this opportunity. We we'll acknowledge the Lord in all our ways. He may direct our path, and in all things, He alone get the glory. Thank you, God, for this opportunity again to share with you, by the grace of God, our knowledge in the Word of God. For we know nothing of ourselves, but we thank God for this in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about the title on this video is going to be called Frog Doctrine. Frog Doctrine. I just put frog, frog doctrine. I don't take too much thought into my titles, but it's called it Frog Doctrine. We're going to begin in Revelation chapter 16, beginning at verse 13. Glory to God in the highest. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to to the battle of that great day of god almighty The word is so wonderful and deep. And think the words used in the scripture are not by accident. As we as you if you are not aware of the plagues of Egypt, I just paraphrase a little bit. God sent various plagues on the land of Egypt because he wanted Pharaoh to let his people go. And if you look in the scripture in Exodus, the first plague he sent was frogs. And they were a nuisance and a plague to the Egyptians. And the reason why he sent the plagues in the first place, because Pharaoh hardened his heart against releasing the people of Israel. And God said in the place, the word of God says in the place that God hardened who he hardened so he can show his power for as an example to those to come. So he sent various plagues. He sent frogs. Then he sent lice. Then he sent flies. And I thought that was awesome when I looked at that this morning, that frogs eat flies. So that which could have helped them with this next plague, he already had removed it because he said, okay, remove the frogs and I'll let your people go. But he didn't do it. So he sent them another one. He said, okay, I'll let you let your people go. But then he, he wouldn't. So he sent another thing and another thing and another thing and another thing. And we're living in, in a today where, as I digress a little bit, I was talking to a, a gentleman from another part of the world. And he said, he asked me, how did you, you know, become religious or whatever? I understood what he meant. And he said, in this world today, there's such a hatred or displeasure with religion. And I understood exactly what he said. And basically what he's saying is the world is going away more and more away from God. People are hardened hardening them themselves towards the things of God. And as and as a result of that, glory to God in the highs, things like this will happen. We get, as you see on social media and in churches, on the news and politics, you see this blatant evidence, hallelujah to God, of what power is at work because when people refuse the things of God th plagues like this happen so the apostle John said and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon let me explain the dragon that is the devil the old serpent called Satan and the devil 
is the dragon. And out of the mouth of the beast, his earthly represent representative. This beast is this person who is going to embody all of the things, all unrighteousness, all wickedness and abomination. This person is going to embody all of that from the from the dragon. Glory to God. And out of the mouth of the false prophet, his forerunner, his false prophet, the forerunner who's going to prepare his way, his way for this fake hero. Just like in the word of God, hallelujah to God, God set John to be the forerunner of Jesus. John was a preacher of righteousness, was a man of God. And he prepared the way for God being manifest in flesh, Christ Jesus, in whom the fullness of the God had bodily dwell. Jesus is pure, holy, true. Everything that in, in, embodies righteousness and holiness was in G, is in Jesus. Now, on the reverse end, the deceiver, the liar, the dragon, going to do the same thing. With the beast, the Antichrist, and he has his false prophet getting the people ready. And they all operating by that same devilish spirit. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth. Who you think is corrupted? If that's why we supposed to pray for these leaders. As believers, we're supposed to pray for the leaders. And of, and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Because there's a battle coming, whether you believe it or not. There's an old um, gospel song, whose side are you leaning on? If you're on the Lord's side, whose side are you leaning on? Because there's a battle and there's already a, we already know who the clear winner is, is God Almighty. But I just want to talk about this unclean spirit, this 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 frog doctrine that is preventing, that is showing itself so plainly today. Preachers, preachers have got away from preaching repentance and the things of the kingdom. Some of them never had it in the first place. That's why they can't preach it. You can't preach what you don't have. Glory to God in the highest. You can't teach what you haven't learned. So if you hear all these inspirational prosperity messages, that's what they've been taught. And that's all they have. And that's all they know. So you can't preach against sin. You can't preach repentance and, and baptism in water in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins. You can't preach being filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Speaking other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. You can't preach holiness. You can't preach one wife. You can't preach one husband. You can't preach modesty. Glory to God. You can't preach separation from the world if you don't have it. So since you don't have it. And you reject the truth, you're going to get another doctrine that's of the devil. And it comes out of you and it goes to your people. That's why the prophet said, like priests, like people. And they love to have it so. you Because some people, there's some things that that people are accepting today. That in time past, they would never accept it. So what happened? They kept listening to that frog doctrine. And it began, and it began to seep in them. Germinate in them and grow in them to now. they like, they don't see nothing wrong with it. And when you start to speak and try to bring them back to the purity and the essence of the scripture, there's an argument. There's a fight. Oh, they have their own interpretation or they don't see it that way anymore. You know, that's the 
when you look at the majority of the churches, everybody, like I said before in another video, everybody's worshiping, praising, and 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 dancing and and singing and all those type of things. And you look at the the, the, the sisters in particular. Ninety percent of them are uncovered. You look, people love the Gaithers, wonderful singers, really inspire and inspirational, and and good songs, gospel songs. Majority of the women, if not all of them, uncovered. <laughs> now you see these pastors, they're they are arraying themselves in these these outward garments, like robes and and cloaks and and uh, it's just for a show. What is that? To put the attention on them. But we make excuses for them. We make excuses for them because we're afraid when someone says, oh, you're judging. No, we're not judging. We're giving you evidence of what we see. That's not judging. It's plain. Now you got people thinking, okay, there's no problem, no, nothing wrong with living with someone and not being married. What is that? And they got people who 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 see no problem with women in church dressed in a in a provocative way doing praise dancing and, and saying that the scripture supports it. Show me where. You got people now who see nothing wrong with Renting your face with painting, you know, you have nothing wrong with men having more than one wife. You have you have all these things. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? And I saw three unclean spirits. Like and then for verse 14, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles. Which go forth on so now I saw a video of this fraud, no well-known false fraud in Africa, claiming to raise the dead, and he has this this. It's not funny because it it, it what, what boggles my mind is people around know it's fake. And he see these things. And rather than say, you know what, because people today want to be a part of something bigger than themselves, but they don't want to. But what other thing, what bigger thing to be a part of than the most high God? But, but, but when you don't want to conform and change according to what God requires, you'll set up for something else. Because then your eyes become blinded and you start looking at the, the, the external things. Oh, the, the, the size of the congregation, how much money the pastor has, and how many people he's reaching. But you're not listening to what he is preaching. They take prayer out of school. They don't want you to mention Jesus. You can mention any other so-called person in any other religion. But when you mention Jesus, it's a problem. Why is that? Because the devil knows the name that has power over him. He don't care about you mentioning Buddha. He don't care about you mentioning Muhammad. He don't care about you mentioning Shiva. He don't care about you mentioning the Dalai Lama. He don't care about you mentioning none of those folks. People are not being persecuted for mentioning Buddha. People are not being persecuted for mentioning Muhammad, people not being persecuted for mentioning Shiva, people not being persecuted for that. Any language that the name of Jesus is called upon, that's where that's where it's a problem. People don't want, as the Apostle Paul said. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 
For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall return unto fables. A fable is something that's not real. That's the frog doctrine. They don't want to accept truth. And a lot of leaders are making people comfortable staying the same way they are. Because once they leave for truth, then their pocket get lighter. Then the attention is off of them. First of all, preachers, pastors, leaders, the focus should, was, should never be on us anyway. It, it's not about us. The apostles never Wanted the attention. They diverted all the attention off of themselves and put it on Jesus Christ. Just like Jesus did in his ministry. He took all the attention off himself and put it on the Father, the Spirit. He said, my Father is greater than I. And people get confused with that. And to this day, people are still confused about the purpose of the Son. The Father is greater than flesh and blood. He, took, he said, my doctrine is not mine. That's 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. He was a fellow disciple of, of Paul, a fellow worker in the, in the work of the Lord, of Paul, Damas. For Damas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, unto Thessalonica. So this happened before. Here's a person who was in the truth, labored with the apostle, labored with the man of God, understood the doctrine, but something down here held him, and he left the man of God to do his own thing. Glory to God in the highest. And, and, Here's another scripture I want to, this is how frog doctrine gets people. Second Corinthians chapter four, beginning at verse one. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. We have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. People take this book, glory to God in the highest, the holy word of God, twist things, fit things to their own agenda, and use it deceitfully. They see what's written, and they know if they tell it how it is, they themselves would, won't have power over the people. Because the word of God has the power over the people, not you. But you want to have the power of the people. That is a clear entrance for you to be infused and manipulated by the frog doctrine. That's frog doctrine. When you give somebody, when you handle the word of God deceitfully. And there's another verse that said that men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That, there's many levels to that. That's, there's many levels to that. One level of it is they're not right. They know it, but they're not right. And then there's some who have it and, and refuse to share it. Because it will take away their profitability or their gain. That's fraud doctrine. The devil is a liar. He's not going to tell you the truth. He tell you the truth. He lose. Anyway, but people, like I said, it comes down to the people. 
I, I'm, I'm on Facebook. Actually, I'm on, to be honest, I'm on it too much because I communicate with some, a lot of people. And also I read a lot of things and I look at people and I look at their, their post and they say a lot of good things. Then I look at them. I'm like, okay, you said all this, you quote all these scriptures. But then I look at other things. I'm thinking how you don't see yourself. That's what the enemy does. The enemy will show you all this other stuff except you. Why? Because he don't care. That's why I ask God to help me. I want my heart and my mind to be right. Glory to God. I want my heart and my mind to be right. I want to be in his will, following his word. Because he don't care about you telling somebody something good and he knowing that <laughs> I got you because you 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 involved in this. You do this. So go ahead and tell these people good things. I got you though. I don't want I don't want to be in that position. I don't want to be in that position. Go to my Last scripture in Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. In the latter times, some, thank God, not all. I'm, we praying and asking God to help us not to be, a, to be not to, to be of them that stay in the faith, which is in Jesus Christ. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We can't stop them from telling these lies. But you, as a responsibility, don't have to give heed to it. That is the problem. The unclean spirits is out there. Speaking, talking, working. Hear what the apostle says. Giving the reason why they departed. Because they listened. Seducing. Seducing is tricked. Glory to God in the highs. A dear beloved older brother, an elder in, the, in, the, in age, used to say a long time ago. He said, if you see an attractive woman and you're saved and she's attractive, you know, whatever, whatever, what, you know, how you consider attractive and you sitting there look and keep staring. That ain't right. That ain't right. But you're still looking. That ain't right. That ain't right. You're still looking, though. So. Even though you're saying with your head, but you keep looking. And after a while, that saying no says, mm-hmm, yes, that is right. Because you kept look, even though you were, you kept looking. So it began to fill your mind, fill your, fill your eyes, fill your mind until, ah, yeah, that does look good. You say, okay, explain that more deeply. Because... Listening to seducing spirits. At first, you're like, nah, I don't agree with all that. You don't agree with all that. I don't agree with all that. I don't agree with all that. And, but you keep listening, though. Well, if you don't agree with it, then stop listening. Why are you going to keep listening to something that you don't agree with? And I had this experience yesterday. Glory to God and eyes. And I, while I was listening, because I, sometimes I talk a lot, and I wanted to give the person a chance to talk to, so I'm listening. But at the same time, I, I've asked God to help me to watch and pray and listen. And there's many things that the person said to me, I don't, I don't agree with. And I had to, you know, and I had, and I had to apply the word to myself too. Cause I knew that they were, they were, they, they didn't have knowledge of the, of the word of God. They have their knowledge in another, in another religion. 
and they were talking to me and I was listening, you know, paying attention. And he said something and I and I was like, no, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. And I have to be mindful myself that, you know, you know, you can't you don't have to be rude. Glory to God in the highest. But at the same time, I had to say to him, OK, based on my belief, this is what so and so is about. And to put it in plain terms, we would talk. He was of Islam. I'm a Christian who believes the word of God. And he was talking about Jesus being a prophet. And at that moment, I sort of stopped and said, well, we don't believe he's, we believe he's more than a prophet. But I didn't, I didn't say that at the time. And I feel kind of like, dang, I should have, I should have been an opportunity. But I just let him talk. And I, so I let him talk. I'm telling on myself because I know, I know Jesus Christ is more than a prophet. That's what they believe. So I let him talk and I said, um, then I said, you know what the problem is between Islam and, uh, and, 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 and Christ, Christians? We talked about Abraham, that the seed was, was through Isaac, not Ishmael. And I said, they believe that they come from Ishmael. And I told him, how do you know? Ishmael had 12 sons. Jacob had 12 sons. And at the end of the day, the seed, the promised seed came through Isaac. It doesn't alienate people of Ishmael because God wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But they're looking because their problem is they're still looking at things naturally and not spiritually. And that's what we share with the with the man. And 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 um, I forgot how I honestly I forgot how most of the conversation went because we were working. We was waiting for tech support, blase, blase. And uh, and um, and it and it and it. And it would amaze me about how much how much he he showed. Maybe that's the reason why I listened. I know this is kind of getting off the subject. But maybe this is the reason why I listen. Listen, because now I realize, because I did learn something that they have been the, the religion, the Islamic Islamic religion has been purposely, purposely by. I don't know who to confuse them. And the more and more I heard him talk, I realized how confused they are. He talked about the afterlife. He said, if there is an afterlife, I don't know. But if, if there is an afterlife, but then they talk about going to heaven, going to paradise. And I said, well, I know there's an afterlife. And that's the problem. That's the problem. I said when people die, they want to live forever because they know that there is a heaven and a hell. Then he talked, you know, then and I, I was then I looked in that book. It talks about resurrection. I'm thinking to myself. Even in that book. They have no excuse. The, at the end of the day, the, the devil wants to deceive the whole world. You think they are exempt? You think he just fighting Christians? He wants to deceive the whole world. You think Catholics know that they know that they're deceived? No. You think Buddhists? That know that know that they're deceived. No. Hindu, you think they know that they're deceived? Sikhs, you think they know that they're deceived? Some Christians, you think they know that they're deceived? No. But what happened? What happened to those who were in the faith? Giving heed. You got folks now that they would never, never. Believe women can pastor. Now their mind's starting to evolve and see things that they've never seen before. Glory to God in the highs. Hallelujah to God. In closing, I saw uh, this is doing uh, what they call so called Lent. It got nothing to do with the scripture. Nothing. It's a hold on, Brother Stu. That's a what is it? Ash Wednesday, putting a piece of 
little dark black ash on their forehead. That's what the scripture said they did. They covered themselves in sacrifice. See, see, when you want to do what the word of God say, you're going to do it the right way. But when you just want to make a show, for pride reasons, you want to modify it to make it convenient just to appear that it's holy. And, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. You get seduced when you think you can listen to things of God and also things of the world and be okay. I was in that trap. To the one point, I was like, it, 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 it froze me. I said, no, this is not right. It was just the mercy of God. No goodness of my own. Glory to God in the highs. People have no problem with being both, trying to be both. And churches make them ex make it acceptable. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. It's one pastor, not even a pastor, I'm not going to even call him a pastor, had, had, had his congregation bring underwear into the church and talking about using the underwear to bind all the forces what kind of nonsense is that and you see all these young people in there this 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 sucking it up bringing underwear having it out in the congregation and nobody said what kind of nonsense is this Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry. Forbidding to marry. There's nothing new under the sun. They, they don't want their priest to get married. What kind of foolishness is that? The apostle Peter had a wife. so they, they But they know that. Those, those are the type of people who hold the truth in unrighteousness. They know the apostle Peter had had a wife and they want to say that Peter were the first pope. Peter had a wife. So we all get that mess from. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. No new thing under the sun. You got people out there saying, oh, no. You're not supposed to eat that. Since when we since when you since you claim to be a Gentile, when was that given to you anyway? Why are you worried about that? You're not a you're not a Jew. Since you want to claim to be a Gentile. Maybe that's another video I need to do on that. That whole phenomenon too, Lord willing. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. So when you remind people of this, the word of God says you're a good minister. When you don't remind people of these things, you're a bad minister. Glory to God. But refuse profane and old wives' fables. Lies superstitions but refuse profane ungodly abominable unclean and old wives fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness i know this video is longer than what i anticipated but uh it's the frog doctrine Unclean spirits coming from the devil. Glory to God in the highest. Pray for us, folks. We mean well in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God for all the love and the support and the prayers of you all. Continue to pray for pray much for me. I'm not independent of your prayers. I'm not the only I'm not the only one out here. 
endeavoring. And we pray that we love one another and work together and submit ourselves to God in all things. Peace be unto you. God bless.